Pints and fish and chips. England has long had a reputation for boring and tasteless food. The joke goes that they explored the world over to find all the exotic spices, only to ignore them. However, after a while they realized that they had a wealth of natural game, produce and spices, and stopped exporting all the yummy stuff. England experienced a renaissance in cuisine and now take great pride in it. Now, you can get a great nosh at food trucks and takeaway places, but the high-end restaurants will not leave you wanting. Takeaway is a great way to experience fantastic ethnic food. Some of the best Indian food I've ever had was at English Takeaway Joint in Chiswick and a fantastic sit-down Turkish restaurant in Soho. Breakfasts If you are staying at Bed and Breakfasts, BNBS, you will be served a fantastic breakfast by your hosts. One option is almost always the full English breakfast, also known as the all-day breakfast. This starts off with an egg, usually fried, but it can often be poached or scrambled by choice. Then a bit of fried or grilled bacon is added. This is not like American bacon, it's more like a slice of fatty ham, much thicker than ours, almost a fattier version of Canadian bacon. They call our type of bacon streaky bacon. Add a couple of link sausage, these are usually not very spicy or peppery. Black pudding, a slice of sausage made with grains, spices, and pig's blood. White pudding, like black pudding, but without the blood, and made with different spices. Grilled half tomato. Grilled mushrooms. Baked beans. Fried bread, sliced white bread fried in the oil used to prepare the rest of the breakfast. Other options may include smoked salmon with scrambled eggs, porridge, aka oatmeal, various cold cereals, fresh and stewed slash canned fruit, poached eggs. In addition, most places offer coffee, tea, milk, and often several types of juice. Sometimes there are homemade jams and jellies, scones, or pancakes as well. Occasionally, I've had muesli, or a mixed fruit slash grain slash cream concoction that was delicious. Now you know why the full English breakfast is also called the all-day breakfast. You will not go away hungry from an English breakfast, and most likely, you won't be hungry again until 2 or 3 p.m., at which point, most places will no longer be serving lunch. So, eat less and have a normal lunchtime, or be prepared with snacks to keep you until dinner. Food Western civilization is extremely food-oriented. We meet for lunch, we meet for drinks. If we have someone over as a guest, we offer them a drink, and we sit down for a dinner party. Barbecues and picnics are how families meet up. We obsess about our weight, our presentation, the taste, style, and healthiness of food, everything associated with the act of eating. So how do the English do all of this? My restaurant of choice in England, or anywhere else in Great Britain or Ireland, is the pub. Sometimes this is because it's the only thing open at 2 or 3 p.m. serving food by the time I've worked off the huge English breakfast. Also, the food is fairly inexpensive, and gastropubs have raised the bar on quality food. Traditionally, pubs have been primarily for drinking, with a packet of crisps, potato chips, pork scratching, pork rinds, or peanuts as an afterthought. Some pubs served pies in a pint, the pies being neat and potatoes encased in pastry and baked and held in the hand to eat. Now, traditional pub grub can include those same meat pies, plus hearty stews, fish and chips, carvery roasts, and whatever the pub's chef can conjure up on the day. A plowman's lunch, bits of cheese, relish or pickle, leftover carved roast from the previous day, and some bread, is a holdover from this time. While many pubs have their own signature meals on their menu, there are certain dishes you will usually always find at almost any pub worth its salt in England. Fish and chips, originally brought to the British Isles by Italian immigrants, this dish has become synonymous with England, Wales, Ireland, and Scotland. Flaky white fish, usually cod or whiting, is battered and deep-fried and served thick-cut chips, fries. Often served with salt and vinegar or tartar sauce. 
Mussels, especially in coastal areas, mussels are a staple, most often served in a white wine and garlic sauce, and a side of traditional brown bread and butter. Steak and ale pie, a thick, dark savory type of stew loaded with chunks of beef, potato, carrot baked in a flaky pastry, I've also seen it with lamb, known as lamb and ale pie. Deep fried mushrooms, coated in batter or crumbs, and deep fried often with aioli sauce slash garlic mayo for dipping. Goat's cheese salad, sometimes the cheese is coated in crumbs then fried, sometimes baked, sometimes cold. Usually served on salad greens with a sweet chutney of some sort, like berry compote. Shepherd's pie, savory mince slash ground lamb and vegetables topped with mashed potatoes and baked until the potatoes are golden. Cottage pie is most often offered in tourist establishments. This is the same as shepherd's pie but is made with beef rather than lamb. Burgers, yes, lots of burgers. Those served in upscale eateries are made with high-quality beef and lots of topping choices. Takeaways also offer burgers on their menu, which are highly processed. Chicken sandwiches are becoming very popular. Smoked salmon, usually served with traditional brown bread and butter, perhaps some capers or dill dressing. Curry and chips, try it. I was skeptical at first, but curry makes an excellent sauce for your chips. Prom cocktail with Marie Rose sauce, unlike the tomatoey sauce in America, Marie Rose sauce is made from mayonnaise and ketchup, sometimes with a little Worcestershire sauce. Small prawns are added to the sauce and mixed well, then served on a bed of lettuce or in a small bowl. Steak and kidney pie, a traditional British pie made from steak and kidney, cooked in a gravy and wrapped in a flaky pastry. Mushy peas, this side dish is served with lots of meals, almost by default. It's similar to a very thick split pea soup, but without the chunks of ham or bacon. Occasionally, there is mint added. Chicken tikka masala, while its origins are disputed, this dish is incredibly popular in the UK. It consists of roasted marinated chicken chunks in a spiced curry sauce. Sunday roast, this traditional meal typically includes roasted meat, potatoes, Yorkshire pudding, vegetables, and gravy. Cornish pasty, a type of pie originating from Cornwall, traditionally filled with beef, potatoes, swede, and onions. Bangers and mash, sausage and mashed potatoes, what can be better? Toad in the hole, a sausage baked in a Yorkshire pudding, covered in gravy. Sticky toffee pudding, a steamed sponge cake made with chopped dates, covered in a butter rum toffee sauce, usually served warm. Bread and butter pudding, traditional bread pudding, made with chunks of stale bread in an eggy custardy mix with cinnamon or allspice, most often with raisins, and served with a whiskey sauce, and warm pouring custard on the side. Spotted dick, a traditional British pudding made with suet and dried fruit, often served with custard. Trifle, a dessert with layers of sponge cake, jelly, fruit, custard, and whipped cream. Eaten mess, a dessert made of broken meringue, strawberries, and whipped cream, traditionally served at Eaton College's annual cricket game. Banafee pie, as the name implies, banana and toffee made into a creamy pie. Onto a cookie crumb base, fresh sliced bananas are layered, then the creamy banana toffee cream is poured on and refrigerated until set. It's served with generous lashings of fresh whipped cream and drizzles of toffee sauce on top, and chocolate shavings, and sometimes chopped fresh nuts. Some pubs have different items, of course, and the fancier they want to look, the more haute they try to make their cuisine. I've seen a couple failed efforts here and there, but for the most part, the gastropubs, and even those regular pubs that care, do a pretty good job firing up the food. If you would rather not eat at the pub, the normal restaurants are great, as well. I'm a big fan of seafood, and England has wonderful dishes made with salmon, prawns, mackerel, mussels, scallops, oysters, and anything else you can imagine. English beef is top-notch, but I usually go for the lamb, as it is more difficult to find in the US, and it is everywhere on the menu in England. Ethnic restaurants tend to be delicious as well, some of the best Turkish, Indian, and Chinese food I've had has been in England. 
Street food is also a great option. I've had pancakes, crepes, fish and chips, chips and curry, and gyros served roadside in mobile food vans. Or you can get supplies at the grocery store and snack on the road. Bonus tip, if you are staying in a self-catering place, you will have a full kitchen to make your own creations. Here are some other traditional treats you might find and try. Scones with clotted cream and jam, similar to American biscuits, these are usually made sweet, with bits of date, raisins, sultanas, or other fruit inside. I've occasionally seen savory scones with cheese or rosemary, as well. Beef Wellington, this dish consists of a filet steak coated with pâté and duxel, which is then wrapped in puff pastry and baked. Bubble and Squeak, a dish made from boiled potatoes and cabbage, mixed together and then fried. Lancashire Hot Pot, a slow-cooked stew from Lancashire, typically made with lamb, onions, and potatoes. Gammon Steak, typically served with eggs or pineapple, this is a classic English dish. Mince pies, small pies filled with a mixture of dried fruits and spices known as mincemeat that are traditionally served around Christmas. Victoria Sponge Cake, named after Queen Victoria, this cake is a sandwich of two sponge cakes with a layer of raspberry jam and whipped double cream or vanilla cream in the middle. Eccles Cake, small, round cakes filled with currants and made from flaky pastry with butter. Jellied eels, a traditional English dish that originated in the 18th century, primarily in the East End of London. The dish consists of chopped eels boiled in a spice stock, the latter of which is allowed to cool and set, forming a jelly. Indian restaurants are very popular in England, as the British ruled over India for almost a hundred years. During that time, many Indians emigrated to the British Isles and made lives there. They brought their spices and palates to awaken local sensibilities to the wonders of Indian food. Here are a few of the restaurants I've enjoyed throughout England during my trips. TAS, a Turkish restaurant in London, served us a delightful meal of TAS Iskender, which is basically a mixed grill on bread with tomato sauce and yogurt. Although I believe it's now closed, we had several fantastic meals at the Rat and Parrot Pub in Chiswick, London. The chef at the time was Australian, and I had the most delicious Persian lamb casserole, which was spicy and sweet, tomato-based but with cinnamon and cardamom. The White Hart Inn in East Drayton was a port in the storm for us, the only place still serving food at 9 p.m. when we arrived in town after a long travel day. We had delightfully savory meat pies with thick gravy. It might have been hunger, it might have been jet lag, but they tasted like ambrosia. Since we tend to favor pubs for lunch, we enjoyed the Rose and Crown Pub in Nottingham and enjoyed chicken with mushrooms and gravy. Another London place we visited was Stefano's Grill, a Lebanese-slash-Italian establishment with lamb shawarma, hummus, and chicken curry. Another lovely pub was the Coach and Horses in Carlisle. We had fried mushrooms and a steak and ale pie, with gravy to dip my chips in. When we were staying near York, we found a pub called the Fox and Grapes. I had lamb moussaka, sort of like a potato-based lasagna with eggplant and lamb. Another nearby place was Nawab, an Indian restaurant several blocks from our B&B. We had samosas, lamb hondi, and chicken jalfresai. It also had a dessert new to us called Fantastica, which was caramel and vanilla ice cream with toffee and chocolate on top. When we stayed in Leeds, we found a Chinese restaurant called Five Six Oriental, an upscale noodle bar. I had a dish with scallops, shrimp, chicken, duck, and veggies in an oyster sauce. Drinks England has a rich history of beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Tea, perhaps the most iconic drink of them all, the British are known for their love of tea. Whether it's black tea, Earl Grey, or English breakfast, it's often enjoyed with a splash of milk and perhaps some sugar. Pims, a fruit cup, but most commonly associated with its number one cup, a gin-based beverage mixed with lemonade and various fruits, herbs, and spices. It's particularly popular in the summer and during Wimbledon. Ale slash bitter, traditional English alish are distinct and have been brewed for centuries. 
There are many regional variations, with many breweries producing their unique flavors and styles. Stout, like Guinness while Guinness is Irish, stouts and porters have a long history in England as well. Gin, England, particularly London, has a storied history with gin. From the gin craze in the 18th century to the modern craft gin movement, it's been a favorite spirit for many. Cider, particularly popular in the West Country, like Somerset and Herefordshire, English ciders are often less sweet than some international versions. Blackcurrant cordial, Rabina a sweet concentrate made from blackcurrants, it's often diluted with water to make a refreshing drink. It became popular during World War II when oranges were scarce, and vitamin risk from blackcurrants was promoted instead. Lemon barley water, a traditional non-alcoholic drink made from barley, lemon, and sugar. Historically, it's been associated with Wimbledon, where it was a favored refreshment for players. Buck's Fizz, similar to a mimosa, it's a cocktail made with equal parts champagne and orange juice. It's often consumed at celebrations or during brunch. Shandy, a mix of beer and lemonade, or another non-alcoholic drink. It provides a refreshing, low-alcohol option for a hot day. Obviously, there isn't room for a list of all the drinks you might find in England, either at the pub or at afternoon tea. But this should give you a taste, if you'll pardon the pun, of what you can get.